Thank you, host. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Wassalat, wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to see you all in this virtual room. Very grateful that we all keep healthy today. First of all, we want to thank our college that present and support this event today. Let us convey our gratitude to our Dean of Faculty Information Technology, Ibu Umi, Ibu Dr. Umi Aziza Ramawati for your present and for always supporting us in our programs. We also thank to our to, we also thank you for our speaker today, Professor Doctor Doctor Honoris Causa, Hal Hamid Dos Muhammadian, yeah. Professor yeah. Professor for International Sustainability and Interdisciplinary yeah. Studies, Senior Futurist Theoristician of the Fifth Wave Theory, Director. For International Management at FHM University of Applied Science in Germany. Uh, please mute. Okay, everyone, please mute. Oke, okay, please mute. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay, let's continue again. For the smooth running of today events, we before we start, let all of us read Quran Surah Al-Fatihah. Let's begin with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Amin. And we continue again. Before we begin, I would like to invite our dean, Ibu Umi Aziza Rahmawati, to deliver uh, opening remarks. Opening remarks. Please welcome Ibu Umi Aziza Rahmawati, our Dean, Faculty of Information Technology, Universitas Yarsi, Jakarta. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Bu Resti. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon and good morning, Prof. Hamid Dus Muhammadian. We met in India last year and we have a good relationship after that and we try to make some collaboration and hopefully it's not the start, but we will <laughs> we will have so many other next or other future collaborate collaboration and This is a hybrid, excuse me, excuse a hybrid me, lecture or a hybrid me, class. We you. still, actually, we still with uh, some other students because in Indonesia they it's their time to have lunch. After lunch, they will come to this class. But we also have many students and also college uh, colleges at Zoom. So hopefully, Prof Hamid. Uh, you can you can give us so many new paradigm about what happened in this world and especially for students what will they face in the future oh, we also have elan pa elan the head of the informatics department we also have bu indah i guess bu indah kurnianingsi she she is the head of the library and information science and We also have so many colleges I cannot see here, but hopefully uh, after this class, we will have another maybe research or some other collaboration on paper and uh, 
Bu Resti, thank you very much for managing this class and thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bu Umi, for the speech. Before we start the main event, it's my honor to introduce our keynote speaker for today. He is an expert and professor for, for international sustainability and futurist in Germany. He is a director for international management and FHM, University of Applied Science in Germany. Since 2018, he is a member of IEEE Educational, Educational Society. His expertise in interdisciplinary studies and sustainability with an engineering background. He has been a visiting professor in my, many, many universities in German and professor uh, Professor in London Institute of Skill Development in UK and some other international universities. He has he has um he has he he as editor editor in chief, a member uh, of editorial board and some high rank in US and US Swiss Singapore and Chinese journal. He has published many articles, books, special issues, and as a keynote, keynote hold more than 150, 650 international speeches in different conference, university, companies, workshops, and projects. He has developed his own concept, model, and theory, uh, theories in hybrid knowledge in, in interdisciplinary studies. For example, he is a theoretician for the fifth wave or tomorrow age theory, I sustainability plus theory, and a dose cultural theory. Prior to his academic Prior to his academic life, he has been working as management consultant for industrial and political sector. The speaker for today is Professor Dr. Dr. Honoris Causa Hamid Dos Muhammadian. So, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Prof. Hamid to the screen. The screen is your Prof. Okay. Hello, everybody. Salamu alaikum and good day because here is now uh, 7 10 a.m. in Germany, and I think in uh, Jakarta is now after uh, one o'clock, 1 p.m. Uh, I'm so happy to have this opportunity to be your guest online to hold this speech and exchange your ideas with you students and other colleagues in Jakarta, the beautiful city in Indonesia, and hope in the near future, I can travel there and uh, visit your city and your country and your very interesting culture. And actually, uh, we said culture and the topic or topic today, the backbone of our topic today is also culture. And uh, that's very important, especially for engineers or engineering students or technical students to have some ideas about cultures and human factors. Because uh, I can start to tell you my story with, to culture and humanity sciences, because I remember, because as I, as I said, you know, I also come from uh, engineering background. I studied computer engineering hardware, computer hardware in bachelor and master industrial engineering and second master social economy in, uh, industry. And uh, I didn't have any idea about culture at that time. And then I remember when I was young, I was working in the Ministry of Urban Development in my country because I'm originally from Iran. And they told me, we will give you a uh, offer to become a um, uh, deputy for cultural affairs. And I said, but you all got the good jobs and you want to give me the job nobody want to have. What is cultural affairs is nothing because I didn't have any idea of what is culture. 
until 2010. In 2010, when I left my country, I, le I read a book from Professor Peter Drucker, and I saw a sentence, very interesting sentence from him about culture. Because that time, because of uh, my expertise in strategy, I published some books and articles regarding strategic management, and I thought strategy is a very important topic in management. But the sentence I read from Peter, Professor Peter Drucker changed everything for me. He said, culture eats a strategy as breakfast. And then I saw, oh my God, look, a strategy is so huge for me, but now in front of culture is just breakfast. Then I found I need to focus on culture. And since 2010, I've started to do research about culture, cultural sustainability, and human factors. Now I'm going to share my PowerPoint with you and start to do presentation. Um, hope you can see my file now. Is it visible? Yes, yes, I can see the slide. Oh. Okay. Okay, our topic today is uh, role of human factors and culture on technology through the fifth wave theory. And today is 8th of February, 2023. And this is the poster of our uh, webinar. Research background. You know, normally when I start to do a lecture or a speech, I try to at first conclude what I want to say and then go to my topic. Based on my teach, uh, you know, research studies and different projects, I found some interesting results and I'm going to share with you. About sustainability indicators, cultural sustainability got a score of three. 7PS infrastructure and development with a focus on technological social sustainability, 4,2. Data information and technology with a focus on 7PS condition, 3,7. Information security and diplomacy for influencing imagination for D3 revolution, which is digitalization, decentralization, and digitalization, and social cohesion, HR competencies, and business economy, 3,3. In my research, in this speech, I have a key question, key result, and key impact. The question is, what is the role of culture and human factors on, on sustainable technology for a small, medium-sized enterprises? Because for colleague Dr. Umi at the first of the speech, already mentioned in uh, Indonesia, most of the companies, they are small, medium-sized enterprises, not huge companies. I would like I would like to ask you, I would like to kindly ask you all respected attendees, please turn off your microphone because of noise that I cannot concentrate on my presentation. Thank you so much. What is the key question is, what is the role of culture and human factors on sustainable technology for small, medium-sized enterprises as I mentioned in your country also is one of the most important area of your business and companies through the fifth wave theory or tomorrow age theory. I will explain this theory for you soon. And why small medium sized enterprise is important because in most of the country, more than 90% of the companies, they are a small medium sized enterprise. In Germany, about 98%. And in European commission, more than 95%. That's a big number. Key result, an innovative 7PS blue-green sustainability and digital readiness and recovery for today's challenges and tomorrow's crisis. This is exactly the topic about the fifth wave theory. As super accelerator to be able for cultural change and a lot of focus on the human factors because trust the science and technology is the most anti-science logical statement ever. Key impact, make the world a better place for living with a high 7PS and 9PSG, blue green sustainability impact and use them. What is 7PS and 9PSG? 7PS is seven pillars of sustainability. In my theory, the fifth wave theory, I have a model called seven pillars of sustainability, which is foundation of this theory. Also, I have another model, 9PSG, which is 
nine pillars of sustainable governance. That means our country's government always can influence sustainability and make the country, make the community, make the cities, make the businesses sustainable. Human factor on top. On 19 and 20 of May 2020, 22, I was conference chairman and keynote speaker at Global Digital Transformation Strategic Summit in Berlin. In this huge conference, we had guests and speakers from technological companies. I would like to ask you again, respected attendees, please take your microphone off because of the noise. Thank you so much. That was a huge conference in Berlin, and we had speakers from companies like Siemens, Motorola, Nokia, Telecom, Telefonica, and huge, you know, huge uh, digital companies like Oracle. That was that was very good opportunity for me to talk about human factors and culture. I have emphasized that the digital transformation globally needs a cultural change. That means a cultural change is necessity. And also a lot of focus on human factors. Around digitalization, and I have been discussing a lot of about importance of culture in the journey of transformation. As I said, trust the science and technology is the most anti-science and technical statement ever. Questioning science and technology and challenging technology are how you do science and technology. That's why uh, our colleague Professor Omi already mentioned today, we are going to have another webinar for you to talk about research and how to publish your you know, researcher's result. Because as I said, we should not trust the science and technology and we need to always question and challenge them. And the result of this question and challenge should be published in our articles, papers, and books also speeches. Then we must take risk and use this science and technology by human resources who has high competencies and EQ, emotional equation, to use capture data from the science and technology and control them to not be out of conditions. Inclusive by design accelerating data, digital uh, transformation for global goals. This is the poster of you know, that conference I told you last year in Berlin, that was a huge global digital transformation and strategy summit. And we had speakers from different huge companies, as I said, Nokia, Siemens, Telefonica, Oracle, and et cetera. Human factors are on top. Based on my fifth wave theory, which I'm going to introduce in next slides, in sustainable technology globally, a cultural change is necessary. And also human factor is the uh, main point. In my papers, books, speeches, and special issues, I have been discussing a lot on importance of 7PS sustainability. 7PS is a model I'm going to introduce in next slide about cultural sustainability is also important for us when we want to go to technology transformation and digital transformation to get ready for future concerns. Just, just now, I just before our conference, I just talked about inflation in Europe and especially in Germany because of the war in Ukraine. Because you can see how is the situation at the moment in you know global world. The world economy has changed from a traditional business economy to a business economy. We must take risk and use this science and technology, as I said, by focus on human love. HR competencies, social cohesion, conversational intelligence, and EQ to capture more data to control them to not be out of the you know standard. According to my fifth wave theory book, the contagion caused by COVID-19, because I just saw today you wear mask, still is there. Was is like a super accelerator because many people said Corona had so much problem for us, of course, but also that was super. Accelerator, and actually, my research results during 2021 and 2022, I had the most you know, activities in my life. Why? Because of this super accelerator push us and authority of uh, digital uh, 
background IT based platforms could help me sometimes to do three speeches in one day in three different countries. In the normal time, that was not possible to travel to three different countries in one day. Human science, again, based on my fifth wave theory and various published articles in IEEE, my published book in 2010 was entitled Passive Defense in IT Technology. I found something about cyber security. Cyber security risk associated with many different factors. But the funny thing is, the main one is human factor. Because, for example, today in cybersecurity, we think hackers, they can find code and they can get your information. But actually, it's wrong. People, they can get your information is people from social media. And we call it, this, this point, we call it social engineering. That's why we have six different factors. Velvet, soft, or color revolution. Uh, software, cognitive warfare, platforms, revolution, and hybrid revolution. When we talk about web revolution, we have some tools, NGO, independent political groups, social movements, yacht movements, media, social media, internet, and edits. In uh, social movement and social media, we have social engineering and information disorder. That means if they want to attack your, your technological platform, they don't need to use hackers. <coughs> they can use a, tech, a model, a tool, we call social engineering, with communicating with your people. And here is, again, human factor. Then we have social engineering, information disorder. And for social engineering, we classify in five categories. Physical approach, social approach, reverse social engineering, technical approach, and social technical approach. These five categories is about cybersecurity, but the, the thing is they are not really technical. They are all about human. They come online in social media, communicate with you, make friendship, and get all information they need. Information disorder is about false news and messages that are created, product, produced, and distributed by agents to get their purposes in three different types. We call it disinformation, misinformation, and malinformation. That means today, social media has a very big role in this case. And culture is the main thing, because false news and messages they can use in your culture and attack your culture. Now I'm going to introduce my fifth wave or tomorrow age theory, or another name of this theory is theory of comprehensive everything, and related theories, concept, and model. As I said, I have invented, introduced, and developed this theory since 2010 to 2017. In 2021, from 13 to 15 of October, we made the international first international conference on this theory in um, University of Oxford in London. And now we are negotiating for the second conference for the fifth wave theory. And now I would like to use this opportunity and offer to uh, Professor Umui. If you like, we can, you know, uh, establish the second international fifth wave theory in your university, in your country, but with, you know, uh, cooperation, the other countries and universities. That would be possible to do it in uh, online or hybrid conference, as we did before. That was the conference uh, in London. 2021 and six months before conference we had every week a webinar weekly webinar every week six months to have discussion regarding different aspects of the fifth wave theory as you see here uh, one of the aspects was political approach i did a speech uh, co uh, with uh, keynote speaker uh, professor dr Dietzsche from german parliament about political approach with professor worsten from uh, Hofstede Institute in Netherlands regarding cultural approach. Uh, economy, I did alone. About social approach, I did with Professor Kanes Raja, who is um, from Malaysia, but who is, he is a professor in uh, London, but he's uh, originally from Malaysia and uh, advisor for the government of Malaysia. Uh, about environmental approach with Professor Stefan Lofar from Denmark, Copenhagen Business School and uh, about technology approach and education with Professor Karsten Duman from Germany 
And for sustainability in general, with Professor Dr. Dr. Walker Wittberg, also from Germany. This is the overview of the fifth wave theory. The fifth wave theory started to talk about different revolution more than 70,000 years ago. More than 70,000 years ago. And that time, in my theory, I called it cognition revolution. And in this time, different you know, things happened in the human life. After that, we had 10 to 13,000 years ago, the agriculture revolution, people understood they can see one place, make farm, make animals, and then live there. And agriculture was you know, a revolution for them in that time. After that, in 500 years ago, we had scientific revolution. People, they could get power, more power to control and dominate the world, animals, and plants. In 300 years ago, during the scientific revolution, we had industrial revolution. And in this time, you know, uh, some other thing happens. I'm going to explain in next uh, minutes. 100 years ago, the first business and uh, economic revolution happened, especially in the West culture. And uh, after 2020, the second business and revolution happened. Because in my theory, after 2020 to 2030 is the first age of tomorrow, is a bridge to move to tomorrow and future. I have a model in this case called KTB model, which is focused on three factors, knowledge, technology, and business. And in this model, I say, if we want to go to second business and revolution for economy, then we need to have three factors always together, knowledge, technology and business. During the you know, cognition, warfare, uh, cognition revolution in 70,000 years ago, we had society 1.0 because it's the first uh, level of life for people. And I call it society 1.0, it's hunting society. And then in 10 to 13,000 years ago, which, which was uh, uh, in the agriculture revolution, I call it uh, society 2.0, which, which is agriculture society. And then <clears throat> during the scientific revolution 500 years ago and industrial revolutions 300 years ago, we had society 3.0, which is industrial society during the uh, 17th and 18th century. And then in end of 20th century, we had society 4.0, which was information society or post-industrial society. And now in 21st century, we have Society 5.0, which is a concept evaluated by Japan government, which is about super smart society and digital transformation. And according to my theory, in the future, we are going to have Society 6.0, which is tomorrow society, which is society they are using data and information beside the human life. Now we are going to industry approach. In 70,000 years ago, we didn't have any industry that was just first development. And in 10 to 30,000 years ago, we had the pre-industrial period, which I call it industry 0.0, fire, light, wheels. And then in 500 years ago to 300 years ago, during the scientific and re industrial revolution we had in 17th century, the first industrial revolution, which is called industry 1.0, it's about uh, me mechanization, the steam power, uh, very you know, low level industries. And in 18th century, we had the second industrial revolution, which I call it industry 2.0, is about mass production, assembly line, transistors, TV, radio. During the Cold War, from nine, uh, Second World War and Cold War, from 1938 to 1990, we had computers, electronics, Internet, I see that's why we are in the third industrial revolution, which I call industry 3.0. And in this time, we had a small, medium sized enterprises 3.0. And then now, today, we have the fourth industrial revolution, which call it industry 4.0, made by um, Germany. And in this time, we have digital transformation, cyber, physical system, network, smartness, digitalization, bioinformatics hybrid knowledge, genetics, sustainability, energy saving, fuzzy logic, neural networks, 
virtual reality, ubiquitous, smart cities, and etc. And in this time, the businesses, they are a small, medium-sized enterprise for going zero. But in the future, in my theory, we have fifth industrial revolution, and I call it industry 5.0, which is about future shock and tomorrow's readiness. And the businesses in this time, I call it a small, medium-sized enterprise 5.0. And in the next slide, I'm going to introduce this concept for you. A small, medium-sized enterprise 3.0, 4, and 5. Okay, how do, you, how do you prepare for the future? The question is, how do you want to prepare yourself for the future? What do you need? According to this theory, KTB model is very important. In KTB model, is a key data to make yourself prepare for the future. Business, knowledge, technology. That means in the future, businesses, they are you know, moving from traditional business to data and traditional business. What comes next? A smartness. Imagination and challenges. Everything is going to be easier, uncomplicated, now, immediately, more, just enough, no discussions, ready to run. Organizational change is a necessity in this case. How we can do organization change? We have two different change. In change management, we have two different change. One of them is individual change. Another one is organizational change. When we want to have organizational change in your organization to prepare for getting ready for tomorrow's con concern, we need to make each individual change. And individual means each person, and that means culture, that means human factor. Then for organizational change, we need to change each individual in your organization. The fifth wave uh, theory histomap is here. You can see the histomap from uh, 70,000 years ago until now. And in this table, you can see uh, you know, which time what happened. And this is from 70,000 years ago, 13,000 years ago, 500 years ago, 300 years ago, 17th century, 18th century, Second World War, Cold War, and today and tomorrow. What is the main point of this theory? The fifth wave theory is a theory to measure the readiness to change into the new age or wave we are just entering. You could see when we started 2020, what happened? Corona, and now what? And in the next slide, I'm showing you what is going to happen soon. Modern business and future of business. Age of tomorrow, which is first step of this theory, is from 2020 to 2030. Now we are in this age. Combination of future of industry 4.0, which I call it industry 5.0, as a symbol of West. Industry 4.0 and future of industry 4.0 is symbol of West culture. And future of society 5.0, which I call it in my theory, society 6, as a symbol of non-West, because I already told you, industry 4 is made by uh, German. And Society 5 is made by Japan government. Then two different cultures, two different technology. Then I have a new concept, as I said, SME 5.0, with three, three different names, SME 5.0, or hybrid SMEs, or tomorrow's SMEs. And I'm going to introduce you in the next slide. Future crisis, or tomorrow's shock, and tomorrow's readiness for this shock. Combination of technology in different culture is also very important. Proceeding of Future of Industry 4.0 as a uh, symbol of West culture, and proceeding of Future of Society 5.0 as a symbol of non-West culture. In 2020, in the, at the 8th World Sustainability Forum in uh, September 15, 16, and 17 in uh, Switzerland, I published uh, five articles. And one of the articles I published was about uh, sustainability culture in mobility technology. And in this case, I talk about industry 4.0 as a Western concept and society 5.0 as a non-West concept. I made a model. I am showing you the model. I, in this model, I put Germany and Scandinavian countries as a symbol of West, South Korea and Japan as a symbol of non-West. I can show you this model in the bigger size. You can see countries, Scandinavian countries and Germany West side and South Korea and Japan non-West. And you can see, for example, the Scandinavian countries so good in uh, waste management, so good in renewable energy, so good in uh, public transportation. Germany, so good in industry 4.0, automotive and car companies, so good in SME business and public transportation. South Korea, so good in IT infrastructure. They have one of the best internet of the world. 
so good in automated and car company japan evaluated society 5.5.0 uh, concept like germany industry 4.0 and you can see they are successful, but with different approach and different cultures. Then in my theory, if we want to have success in the future, we need to combine this kind of concept and view in technology from different cultures and put them together with interdisciplinary technology and theories and make hybrid businesses. This is the pyramid of mobility I use in this conference, you know, walking, cycling, public transport, car, sharing ride, private cars, and plane. And this is the uh, diagram of Global Innovative Index 2022. You can see Germany and South Korea, they, South Korea, they are always in top 10, in a top 10 in a innovative economy of the world. That's why this is also very important for us to know two countries from two different cultures, West and non-West, but so successful in innovative, economy, sometimes Germany on top, sometimes South Korea, but they are always in top 10. Digital transformation requires a, a, you know, a cultural change. If we want to move from traditional mindset to digital mindset, this is very important to have cultural change. And this should be you know, with innovation and understanding the consumer and consumer's cultures. What? Theory of fifth wave is invented, introduced, and improved to support all businesses, especially small, medium-sized enterprises, to first of all forecast, secondly prevent, thirdly face for the today challenges and tomorrow's crisis, shocks, and concerns. Well, today challenges and tomorrow's crisis has impacted at level of, as I said, the model KTB: knowledge, technology, business which called the KTB model. I made this model in 2010 to 2017. And KTB model is part of future in the theory of fifth wave. And in this case, we have tomorrow, tomorrow society. What are the key data? Knowledge, technology, business, and future concept. Okay, culture helps us to think different. You just have to dare to do the right thing in and the necessary thing with full uh, commitment. Look at these two photos. The left photo is the pyramid in Egypt with almost 7,000 years uh, old. And the right one is a building, a new building. It is also pyramid, but with different thinking approach and different mindset. That's what, as I said, cultural change and changing mindset is very important. Last technology stage before KTB model. Industry 4.0 and especially key enabling technologies as virtual reality are becoming critical to face the company challenges and client needs. Level of connectivity between component in, involved in the organization process. An organization is always in search of new technologies which can achieve the desired results in minimum input and in short time period. You will see this is the technologies we are going to have before KTB model, knowledge, technology, and business. Why? The aim of this theory is to provide societies blue, green, sustainable, innovative digital readiness, and recovery CSR, CG, CSE strategies. By focusing on CSR 1.0, which is corporate social responsibility, CSR 2.0, which is corporate sustainability responsibility, CG, corporate governance, and etc. This is the approach we need to have in this uh, theory's aim. Uh, Professor Umi, I want to tell you, I published um, four chapters in a book in New York, uh, and uh, th that would be uh, available soon regarding uh, smart cities and CSR. And I will introduce you when it's published, I will introduce you to send this link to the student to use as a reference. How? By using innovative digital infrastructure, innovation, implementation, development, and application of future of four technologies, which called in my theory, fifth technology. And this can influence, change, improve education and training on digital infrastructure, as well as changing our lives. Seven pillars of sustainability model, I mean, you know, in this speech until now, I, many times I talk about this, and now I'm going to introduce this model. 
Based on my theory, I made a model with seven factors because according to United Nations, sustainability has only three factors, environment, social, and economy. But in my model, I have seven factors, culture as a first priority, environment, second, social, third, economy, four, technique, fifth, education, sixth, and politics, seven. In addition, we have peace and love. In the model, you see the spider model. Uh, with this model, I could I, you know, calculate sustainability with different approach. If you look at this model, the blue color is uh, calculation of sustainability in one company before Corona and the red one is during the Corona. Then you can see during Corona, the sustainability was lower and also not harmonized. According to this model, also we have priority, as I said, culture is first, environment second, social third, education, economy uh, four, education five is technique, education six and seven policy. Love and peace is also there. And they are, all have communication and connection to each other. This model, culture is first priority and can influence all other factors. The other factors also can influence culture. That means if we want to talk about culture, we cannot say culture is an individual topic. Culture is one topic, can influence six other factors in CBNPS, and the other factors can influence culture. Cultural are point are behind of sustainability. The small, medium-sized enterprises, they are social oriented internally and externally. That's why we need to make a balance between internal and external perspectives. Some of the other pillars also are foundation, the culture, politics, education, social, and environment. There is another theory in fifth wave theory called I sustainability plus theory. I made this name for this theory because I is innovation, sustainability, and plus is high technology. This is based on trinity of open innovation, sustainability, and future of fourth smart technology, which called fifth technology. And in the left side, you can see this model, they are together. In the core, we have the sustainability with seven PRs. Then we have technology, business, and marketing innovation. And then we have the uh, high technology for the future. Innovation has also three approach, business innovation, technological innovation, and marketing innovation. I have also another theory. I designed this theory called Doost Cultural Theory, which is a theory for cultural adaptation. In this theory, I made three indexes, knowledge, know-how, do-how, Another one is cultural adaptation and cultural differences. I made this model after 2012. I work on it and I made this model according to these factors. In uh, knowledge, we have invisible culture, visible culture, and language. In cultural differences, we have method from different uh, ex expertise in this field, hoisted dimensions, Victor dimension, Tropinar's dimension, Hall dimensions, and globe dimensions. In the cultural adaptation, we have the model from 7PS, social competencies, environmental competency, cultural competency, economy competency, educational competency, technical competency, political competency, and communication competency, digital culture transformation, legal points, intercultural dis, um, transformation, predisposition, and cross-cultural shock. According to this model, you can make data and analyze this data with uh, using multiple regression and then find cultural adaptation for the people and companies they want to work with the other companies from another culture. Impact of the fifth wave theory. Expected impact of this theory is education and training with the focus on HR competencies, EQ, conversational intelligence, healthcare system reinforced. I call it in my theory welfare 5.0. Uh, in this case, I need to tell you students and I would like to invite you to uh, publish your articles in a journal. Just uh, we have started to communicate and work with them. I am editor in chief in this journal. It's about health and education. And Professor Umi, your uh, dean in your faculty, is also editorial board at this journal. You are very welcome to write your articles regarding uh, IT for you know health and education with the focus on this theory. Because if you go to this website, you will see it's about welfare 5.0, which is a new concept about IT, education in health. New opportunities for affected citizens to be employed created, citizens-based service enhanced, 
I call it a new concept here, Urban 6.0 or Utopia. My, my speech tomorrow is regarding this topic. And uh, if you like, we can also arrange another speech about the topic Utopia and Urban 6, which is a topic combination of IT and uh, smart cities. World technological economies more resistant and sustainable and new opportunities for societies and small medium sized enterprises to achieve cultural sustainability. Result of this theory is communities, societies, cities, and businesses capable of making you know, a good future, a better place for living, mapping sustainable future, tackling future concern, and make the world a better place for living. Conclusion, the fifth wave theory invented a new concept for tomorrow's environment, ecosystem, and small medium-sized enterprises. In this model, you will see SMEs, they are focusing on social, environmental, and economic approach. That's why if you want to make a business, environmental responsibility should be your first priority, social cohesion second, and economy is the last one. The problem today we have in the world because all businesses, they focus first of all on the economy and business, not the other factors. In this model, you can see according to these three matrix, you can calculate SMEs with a focus on environmental responsibilities, social cohesion, and economic efficiency. This is the priority. First, environmental responsibility. Second, social cohesion. And the last one, economic efficiency. I have also another concept. I already talked about this. A small, medium-sized enterprise 5.0 or hybrid SME or two-model SME. In this business, we have two wins. One is the business economy like before, but the second one is focused on CSR, social responsibility, environmental friendly, energy, and uh, resource saving, and also future planning. If we want to know these SMEs, how we can make it, we have 14 points for these SMEs. I published many articles about this topic. And uh, lastly, in 2022, I published a, a, an article, how we can make SME ranking in different countries for them to make motivate the small, medium-sized enterprise to grow up and come to the rank to get you know, high level in different factors to become SME5. SME5, they have 14 factors. They are based on social eco environmental SME model, which I talked about this in the previous slide, environmental responsibility, social cohesion, and economic efficiency. They are digital and smart. They are large SMEs, which have more than 250 to 500 members of staff. They are innovative. They are industry and industry related services. They focus on SME culture and digital culture. They are sustainable. They are with a focus on blue green, clean economy, future planning, CSR one and two and CSE, which is corporate social responsibility, corporate sustainability and responsibility, HR talents, competencies, qualifications, skills training, focus on EQ and conversational intelligence. They have succession planning to prepare people to be leader in the future, focus on internet of business, which is IOT in business, and focus on D3 revolution, digitalization, decarbonization, and decentralization. And in the right side, you can see the model. Conclusion, the theory of fifth wave has concluded a business economy moving from a traditional business to data and traditional business. Okay, now I'm going to show you the first edge of tomorrow in the fifth wave theory. From 2020 to 2030, we are going to have a chains of challenges and crisis. And we should not let this change come together and we need to split it. If this happened, then we are successful. Otherwise, if they merge, we are going to have a big you know, future concern. First of all, health crisis, educational risk, cultural risk, technological risk, social risk, economic risk. At the moment, we are busy with economic risk. And in 2023, 2024, we are going to bad situation. Political risk, environmental risk, and risk as consequences, we didn't, you know, we never get any information about them, like nuclear test and test in Antarctica and et cetera, and other risks. According to this theory, the first wave was the risk of contagion COVID-19 happened in 2020. And then risk of the other biological attack, because today we have, we were most, we say corona, but we know the, the virus, this is not corona, this is called new and other viruses. 
And also we have hybrid warfare. That means many countries they say they have war. Today we have war in Ukraine. After COVID-19 and biological attack, the next is risk caused by economic shift. And now we have this risk. And the next wave is caused by recession and social problem, because this recession made many uh, economic problems for people, and then we are going to have social problems. Hybrid warfare is just still there. And then we have, as I said, risk of contagion, and then biological attack, 2020, 2021, 2022, economic shift, and we are going to have social problems soon. And then something is going to be so important. This summer, we had global warming because of high greenhouse gases, emission, and climate pollution. And next one, risk caused by um, climate change. Hybrid warfare is there. Now we are going to have more contagion, biological attack, economic shift, precision and social problems, greenhouse gas emission, climate change, and then technological risk. Look at it today. Many technology, many robotics, many AI, they are going to control people. Now, with the social problem, I said, in social media, we are not sure the person is in front of us, a real person or is a robot to write us, communicate us on, on, I don't know, some social media. And we have many books, many stories in the history, and also in this uh, 20th century and 21st century, like what Dr. Michael Crichton already published a book about Jurassic Park, and we had the movie, can control the, you know, genetic technology with the dinosaurs, they are dominating us. In uh, Terminator, the other movies, you can see for cyborg, when they cannot control the future, future send robots to dominate people. This is all about technology crisis, and we are going to face with this soon. Uh, Professor Isaac Asimov already published some books in this regard for the future as science fiction uh, you know, stories, but this is going to happen soon. And if we are not careful, and this continues, especially environmental problems, we are going to face with biodiversity collapse, which end our life. And still we have the warfare, hybrid warfare, which is today like war in Ukraine could influence the other factors and crisis. Then to the challenges and tomorrow's crisis, something very important I'm telling you, AI ethics war. Yes, it is technological crisis and serious. Technological crisis like AI and robots would dominate people because we have machine learning, we have artificial intelligence, and this is one of the crises we are going to face soon. Based on fifth wave theory or tomorrow age theory, the first age of tomorrow, we already told you in the models, we are facing different crises like biodiversity, you know, biological attack, economic shift, recession, social problems, climate change, but number five is technological crisis, like AI, robots, and when they want to dominate people. And number six, if we don't manage all these things, we are going to have biodiversity collapse. The World Economic Forum Global Risk Report 2023 finds that the cost of living crisis to be most short-term risk, which is we have today because of the economic problem, and the failure of climate uh, mitigation and climate adaptation are the biggest long-term concept. This is exactly new report from Global Economic Forum in 2023. And the top you can see, first one for short-term is cost of living, and the uh, long-term for 10 years is failure of mitigate climate change. Okay, now the role of culture in sustainable technology for a small, medium-sized enterprises. Culture, what is culture? When we talk about culture, culture is a combination of many components, language, religion, working schedule, food, medical care, folk art, celebration, clothes, dressing, manners, jokes, child raising model and buildings. And this is culture, but for example, many people, they thought if they know a new language, they know the new culture, but it's completely wrong because language is very, very small part of the culture. Why? Because Professor Edward Hall in 1976 made a model called culture iceberg. And in this model, he showed 
the, the cultural thing we see is visible culture is just 30 percent and 70 percent of culture is invisible and we cannot see that's why when we talk about language language is one of the part of visible culture which is so small food art, dance language tradition dress they are all visible but the thing we cannot see is belief value religion this is very important and sometimes dangerous visible part of culture as i said language working as casual folk food work art celebration close building tradition joke they can influence our business but i put a what orange color that means we need to use mathematics to calculate them and give them weight and ratio and then influence our business in different culture factors they are different and invisible culture like philosophy the way, the way of happiness sadness religion beliefs values the way of love laugh cry why, why not, must, must not, they all can influence also our business. Also, they need to have different weight or ratio. When we talk about culture, we say West and non-West. You re remember I told you always West culture, non-West culture. We don't say West, West and East. Why? Because according to this map, when we say West and East, this is geography. For example, Australia is in East, but the culture is West. Brazil is but the culture is non-West. This is something you need to know. We never use the word West and East. We say West and non-West. We have also torn countries. In this between, there are three countries. We call them torn countries, not West, non non-West. Turkey, Mexico, and Russia, because these countries, the leader of these countries, they uh, you know typically uh, are non-West. They are tradition, but they try to move to West country and try to, to do that. But they're always in this between. We call them torn country. Six dimension of nation or national cultures from Professor Gerhard Hoestede in Netherlands. He He's a very old man now. He is, uh, uh, I think, 95 years old now. Uh, he was the former employee of IBM, and he studied, he's a professor for psychology. He re did research with traveling to many countries, more than 100 countries and found the national cultures and value conflicts. And he found them in six dimensions, individualism and collectivism, power distance, uncertainty avoidance, masculinity, femininity, long-term orientation, short-term orientation, indulgence, restraint. I just go to some of them because of lack of time. Power distance, for example, in West culture, most of the time power distance is short, court, short because Power distance means how much you have distance between you and your boss. But in non-West culture, for example, Indonesia is also non-West culture, your country, power distance is always between boss and people high. And this is one point in culture. For example, another one is uncertainty avoidance. Cultures, they are, most of the cultures they invest, they are accepting you know, risk. They don't avoid risk. That's why they are, in uncertainty avoidance, they are so um, low, they don't avoid risk. But non-West cultures, most of the time, they avoid risk. We, me, you, as non-West people, they always avoid risk. Why? Because we are long-term orientation people. You can see it's number five. We already learned, we always need to prepare for ourselves for the future and manage risk. But people invest most of the time, especially countries like Canadian countries, they are not too worried for the future. That's why if you Google happiest people of the world, they are from Scandinavian countries. Because of lack of time, I don't go to the details of these points because this is also another, you know, we, have, we need another hour to talk about this. It could be also another uh, webinar regarding six dimensional national cultures. I can talk about this for you. <clears throat> and this is the website. You can go to this website and check update information about these six factors in different countries right away and compare them together. Misunderstanding is also very important. Sometimes you have two different views, but actually this is misunderstanding because you are both right. <clears throat> I talk about digitalization, decarbonization, and digitalization of digital revolution, which is three technological revolution could influence, change, shape, or 21st century. Digital index, we had a project in Germany about digital index, and we found dimension of digitalization, three dimension, <clears throat> value change, IT infrastructure, and management of human resource innovation. Industrial perspective on VR and XR technology, the visualization of 3D models, 
and other contact in VR application give the possibility for different people to access them for, from any location to analyze and interact with them in a virtual environment. Conception, research and design, development and assembly, products, inspection, maintenance and repair, marketing and promotion, control and of robotics, workflows and benchmarking, training and floor planning. I have a model called 5N PG, BG 7PS model. This model is very important for you as engineer, for me as interdisciplinary person and for the other people. Because the problem we have in all countries, all communities, all companies, different people in different sectors, they are always together. Engineers together, medical doctors together, philosophers together, but this is wrong. They need to have communication together. <clears throat> we have five networks, political networks, technical networks, organizational networks, economic network, interdisciplinary community networks. They all need to be together. How? Like this. We have these networks, political, economy, technical, organization. They have to have you know, common factors. And then in the middle, we have interdisciplinary community network. And then we need to use this for blue-green sustainability to make high livability and quality of life to achieve high 7PS sustainability factors, as we know, seven factors for getting high sustainability. For SMEs, we have also traditional business based on SCM, supply chain management, a smart uh, business based on IT, like app we have today, and a smart innovative business based on a smart market intelligence and consumer behavior, like company like Microsoft. Because before 1995, we didn't have, you know, need to Windows, but after 95, Bill Gates made a new product and make a need for everybody to use Windows. Today, more than 80% of computers, they use Windows because other computers, Apple Macintosh or the other operating system like CPM or Linux, they are not really user-friendly for people to use. <clears throat> Sixth dimension of industry 4.0, you can see in this dimension, one of them is about employee and competency for people. And here, for readiness, for in industry 4.0, we have to prepare people in five levels and zero from zero, uh, outsider, beginner, intermediate, experience, expert to top performer. And for this, we need to make a um, synchronize between business cycle and people cycle. This is very important because today we have a gap in this between. And for that, we need to have five rights, right side, right skill, right size, right span, and right shape which kind of skills we need to have. Resources, skills, activities, and success failure. For this, we need to know human competences is very important because today we try to use technologies, but these technologies, sometimes they are artificial, like artificial intelligence or machine learning, they are smart. That's why people must control them. People must analyze the data and control devices to not be out of control. And this is very important. And there are some questions, what kind of people we need? What kind of competencies we need? And what, which kind of uh, technology we can use? We did a project from 2017 to 2013, 2020 in um, European Commission. I was academic leader of this project called uh, IOE, Internet of Energy Education Qualification. In this project, we did a research in uh, countries like Germany, Italy, Portugal, and Spain. And with these surveys, we had 512 response. And according to this response, I found something to answer the question I asked. Okay. First question is, where do you see the biggest advantage of using this kind of technology in your organization? And the most answer says, developing a new business model. Second question, what kind of innovative technology you can use for your product or services to develop your business or organization. 47% they said design of a smart application. Another question said, why don't you use this technology and services in your business? 48% they said lack of technical skills and competencies. And many, you know, a small group of people, they talk about security concerns. Then security concerns were not very important for them. Lack of competencies and skills was important. Sustainable development and technological de development. You know, we have these 17 sustainable goals from United Nations. That was the 
one of the biggest social project in uh, United Nations. Uh, in uh, more than three years, 80 questionnaires for 7 million people. And according to this, I, I made a new model for sustainability, livability plus quality of life. And for sustainability, cultural sustainability, technological sustainability is a necessity. Factors for sustainability is changing world, shared value, responsibility, and risk. It is very important. If we have them, we can have guarantee to get sustainable development. There are also technology, sustainable development, and technological sustainability, artificial intelligence, machine learning, Internet of Things, big data, digital twins, blockchain, 3D printing, 5G, and cybersecurity. I would like, again, to invite you students. If you are interested, you can uh, uh, contact to your uh, professor, Professor Umi, and ask her to be in different teams to publish your articles. And I support you to publish your articles for free in different journals. The only constant parameter is time. Speedy and quick transformation of data into transformation. Management organization approach for uplifting employees, enhancing com uh, compatibility of and team support in workplace. We make a tree for each factor for 7PS model to calculate. For example, cultural sustainability. We make a goal. We make for this goal different criteria, and for each criteria, sub criteria. And then we say sustainability is sigma probability of each factor times impact of each factor times ratio of each factor after normalization. Because you know, in mathematics, always we normalize the ratio when we want to cal calculate. Then effective sustainability is probability times impact times ratio normal. End of the story. Remote, independent, flexible, efficient, effective, or productive. Change the perspective, add new knowledge sources. Interconnected, interdisciplinary, tactically effective, strategically sustainable, value creating. This is a view from a drone, and this is a view from you to the drone. This is very interesting. From this view, you can see everything so, you know, digital and modern, but from this view, everything is so, you know, nature. Opportunities in higher education institutions, outstanding visualizations, interactive experience, self-guided -guide, exploration, autom autonomy learning, interest of le learning, interest in learning, physical training can become cheaper, learning by doing skill-based learning, remote teaching, achieve engagement, active engagement, VR makes unsafe training conditions safe, VR may speed up communication and decision making, evaluate the reactions of students and give him her feedback afterward. Opportunity in small and medium sized enterprises, virtual testing, advanced service and training, level less travels, knowledge transfer, increase the efficiency and uh, agility in the design safety for field staff, immersion better and fast competencies, acquisition, predictive maintenance, marketing, attract, attracting cost, consumer or customer, and hospital sense. I'm going to show you a case study. This is a you know, result of a statistical report from 2012 to 2018 for my university in Germany. In this from 2020, 12 to 2018, 97,6% of the students after two months graduation could get job. This is a very huge success. 97,6% of a student after two months graduation could get job. But the interesting thing is in the diagram here, 81%, the blue one, the blue color, of these people, they got job in internship place. That means internship for us is so important because we have a good communication with companies and businesses. This is combination of knowledge, technology, and business. But now I'm going to tell you why, the secrets. FHM University of Applied Science secrets as a German SME for a small medium sized enterprise to get success in two aspects, empowering results. FHM University 
following it, you know, follow these uh, points for the educational services. Future-based educational curriculum, we say FHM is a uni for, from the future, not for the future. Long-term full-time internship in digitization, a strong relationship with their German technology and small medium sized enterprises, multicultural situation. We have a university from the future, not for the future. Combining academic education, applied science, and vocational training. The problem is most of the university they focus only on academic education, only on theory. But we have combination of three things: academic, applied science, and vocational training. Using educational service for own or own employees. For example, today this webinar is one of the point your Dean uh, did is very interesting. Identify the talents. Every employee is a talent. Train, coach, and lead them to improve their abilities. Succession planning to prepare them for the future leadership positions. Knowledge management by sharing knowledge, improve EQ and conversational intelligence. Focus on German technology and globalization. In this university, we think globally, we act regionally, getting ready for digital transformation. Conclusion, I'm going to conclude my speech. Internet is not a green technology because you are IT students or informatics students, most of you maybe. That's why you need to know internet is not a green technology. About 4,1 billion people or 53% of or 54% global population use internet. Internet is about 3,4% or 4% of global greenhouse emission. These emissions are predicted to be doubled by 2025 to become 8%. Why? Each server requires a lot of energy. Search engine, every search requires effort, a lot of energy. Web browsers, 1,76 gram CO2 per page view, and emails, 4,50 gram per CO2 per, pay, per email. Go digital without losing humanity. This is con my conclusion. Also, the clear benefit of digital transformation, you should not forget it. Also, machines can provide more efficiency, more eff effectiveness, more productivity, and fast services, but never forget the importance of human factor. We need to have you know, this technology in academic and business. VR technology, as example, is fundamentally accepted as a revolutionary tool in the modern economy. The user first adapter are alone. The imagination is developed, developable. Could good education software exist? It takes time to introduce them to or try to them out to be flexible in let's do it or explanation and product development presentation. Take it or leave it is absolute and avoid any complicated, hidden, or tricky tasks. Participation and training. <clears throat> this model showed you work psychology, organizational psychology, technical work environment, social work environment, workplace, work organization, work equipment, work group, and individual should have connection in this between. <clears throat> Think and act as one unit. You, from different factors, from different sectors, you need to come together as one unit. Prof professionalization, technical and non-technical people. Outlook, culture, management and skills, more use cases, exchange of experiences, technology and engineering, standardized interfaces, innovation usability, similar handling to smartphones or tablets, voice commands, target groups, lectures, students, engineers, managers. Okay, again, I'm telling you, according to this speech, we saw the fifth wave theory, today challenges tomorrow's crisis chain, we should not let them merge, we need to see it. Three digital uh, revolution, the three revolution, digitalization, decarbonization, and decentralization. Having comprehensive view to the fifth wave theory, pay attention to culture and seven factors in seven PS model, economy, social, environment, technology, education, politics. Allocate a large part of cultural budget in your country for foreign affairs. Pay attention to private sector, 
as a performer in a field of culture to do comp uh, competition. Pay attention to the culture as sustainable infrastructure for other technology and economic issues. Culture must be inter or organize or, or, or organizationalize and council manage. That means between different organizations, not just one ministry. Because, for example, in many countries, just Ministry of Culture refers focus and is being responsible for culture. But in Germany, many different companies, many different ministries, they are <coughs> responsible. That's why we say inter organizationalize and council manage. Cultural readiness for future concern using opinion expert and uh, researcher pay attention to scientific not practical knowledge do how know how pay attention to invisible and visible culture pay attention to books media magazines pay attention to different people with comprehensive and interdisciplinary approach pay attention to consequences of all activities we do regarding culture and pay attention to a uh, role of human factor in digital technology. Based on my theory, as I already told you, Corona was like a super accelerator. That's why we need to have always comprehensive view and make a plan for future. 7PS can always help us in this regard. And then there are some key points. Consumers, products, market, service, marketing, innovation, change, culture, risk, project, purchasing for Customer relationship management, customer experience management, people, human, HR competencies, EQ, SQ, LQ, and conversational intelligence, future, and then with all of these things, having data and information. How to do that? Thinking globally, acting regionally. Based on these models I told you, governments, comprehensive strategic planner, resource managers, and energy experts, process facilitator, Politicians, universities, researchers, and academic people, SMEs and institutions, communities, cities, and societies, they must focus on blue-green sustainable energy infrastructure, cross-validation, business, marketing, and technological innovation, blue-green sustainable mobility, water, water, wastewater, and water waste management, blue-green sustainable economy, health, labor, and social welfare security. Thank you so much for your attention. And this is my email. If you have any question, if you want to contact me. And as I said, if you are interested to publish your articles, your research results, you are very welcome to contact to your dean, Professor Umi, because she's also, uh, you know, it's a great honor to have her as editorial board as this, some of these journals. And she will support you to publish your papers there. And I promise you, in Near future, we can arrange another you know, webinar for you to talk about research, research methodology, and art of writing articles. Thank you so much. OK, thank you for the presentation, Professor Hamid. OK, ladies and gentlemen, it's, uh, now it's time for a questions and answer session. This is an opportunity actually for an all of you to engage with Professor Hamid and gain uh, a deeper understanding of the topics discussed today. If you have a question, please raise your hand or maybe you uh, use the Zoom uh, or just type the question on the chat and I will uh, I will read it for you. Okay? from the class oh, okay uh please use the microphone okay. or maybe you can you can move hello professor uh, Hamid, sir. okay my name is stephaling sanalubis from the faculty of information technology Major Hello, nice, in nice to hear. information science. Allow me to ask: Did the Russia's war with Ukraine lead to a currency drop in Europe? Europe currency, and why could it currency drop in Europe? Thank you. Sorry, your voice was not clear. Can you please uh, pardon the question, or maybe uh, or colleague they can help me to yes, hear the question, or maybe you can type it because you could not hear. Right. 
Okay. Hello, Professor Hamid. My name is Tukang Sanalubis from the Faculty of Information Technology, majoring nice in Library and Information Science. Allow me to ask. Nice to see you. Did Russia war with Ukraine lead to currency drop in the Europe or currency? And why could it currency drop in Europe? Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your question. Actually, your question is not a cultural question, it's a political question. But I give answer to you regarding, you know, analyzing this happening. First of all, you need to know the war in Ukraine is not war between Russia and Ukraine. This is war between West and non-West culture. And Ukraine is the only land of this war. Because you can see Russia may started this war expanded in different border of Russia. Because if you go to the history in 19 Soviet Union divided to different countries, that time they made a contract with former president of Soviet Union, uh, President Mikhail Gorbachev to stop you know, expanding NATO. But after this happening, they started to have more countries in NATO, like West Germany that time, because East Germany that time was part of Warsaw contract. And now, after that happening, became part of NATO. That time, because we had West Germany before 1990, and West and East Germany. East Germany was part of Warsaw, and then became part of NATO. Czech, on that time, Czechoslovakia was one country, Czechoslovakia, because now it's Slovakia and Czech, Czech Republic. And now many countries, they were part of Soviet Union, Estonia, Lithuania, Lithuania, and uh, this kind of country, they became part of NATO. And um, then the other countries like uh, Belarus, Ukraine, they also wanted to do that. Belarus changed their mind and they, they followed the Russia, but Ukraine followed this yeah, you know, point to become part of NATO, but always Putin started you know, to communicate and a negotiation, but that not, was not happened. Because one of the points, if I want to answer your question regarding culture, I need to go to 1993. If you Google in 1993, a very famous professor from Harvard, Professor Samuel Huntington, published an article at Foreign Affair magazine called the article called Clash of Civilization. In this article, he said we, we had nine, 10 civilizations before, and now there are just four civilizations active. And we should not let three of these civilizations, which are in non-West culture, to come together. That's why we need to expand, you know, NATO to divide them. Then NATO had idea to the expand to become, you know, you know, also Turkey is part of NATO. Turkey is the only country in uh, Middle East is part of NATO. And they try to continue to be, you know, more countries there like Afghanistan, like Kazakhstan, like Turkmenistan, Mongolia, Iraq, but that was not successful this strategy because Professor Huntington in 1996 published a book in this regard called Clash of Civilization, New World Order. But now we are going to have this new world order because you can see, in the war in Ukraine, all West cultures, West countries, they are helping Ukraine with weapons and with supporting Ukraine in the war. And also many countries in non-West support um, Russia. And that means exactly the new world orders started to happen. But the reason we have problem for the currency in Europe is, you know, Russia is one of, one of the country in top five highest gas resources of the world. And most of the gas energy and energy resources in Europe supported and uh, you know, uh, provided by Russia. But now in this case, because they put sanctions on Russia, Russia also started to stop giving them energy. But who is loser of this game? Of course, Russia and whole Europe, especially Germany. Because Unofficially, Germany is the head of European Commission. And as before our, our conversation uh, with uh, Professor Umi, I said, we have a big inflation in Germany now. But who is the winner of this game? The winner of this, this game is very clear. If you go to you know, time before the war in Ukraine, the currency, if you compare the Euro and dollar, 
Dollar was here and Euro was here. Euro was upper than dollar, but now dollar is upper than Euro. Why? Because that, that means that was good for USA, more benefit, and USA now can give energy to Europe. But how energy transportation from USA to Europe from Atlantic Ocean is so expensive? And this is all pressure on Europe. Also, <clears throat> besides, many refugees, some thousand million people, they move to Europe, also in Germany, and that also makes so much cost for European countries. That's why we have inflation in some of the 100%. And also, when energy is expensive, this is a cycle. Transportation is expensive. And when transportation is expensive, all goods is expensive because business is based on supply chain. And this transportation can influence the goods. And then everything you want to buy is going to be expensive in Europe. But what is the solution? The solution is we stop the war. We go to peace and love. You remember in my 7PS model, we had peace and love. We need to go to peace and love. Also, we need to use the other countries. They have so much oil and gas resources, but they are also in the sanctions now. And they can support the all countries to solve this problem because now it's winter, energy, cold weather, and all these problems can make a big inflation and recession in whole world. I hope the answer was in, enough for you. Thank you, Professor Hamid, for the answer. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Professor. Now, um, in the chat room, we have Muhammad Reza Oktosandi. Um, Muhammad Reza, do you want to ask uh, to Professor personally? Muhammad Reza, you can unmute yourself. Uh, okay. okay. Hello, Professor. My name is Muhammad Reza Waktasandi from the Faculty of Information Technology. I would Hello, like to ask nice about to what is the impact of culture and human factors on development and adoption of technology according to the fifth wave theory. Thank you. Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, actually, you know, in the fifth wave theory, the backbone of fifth wave theory is human. And fifth wave theory is based on human and humans and humans needs because we are going to get ready in this theory for the future concept. That's why the impact of culture and human factor in development of technology is very important. First of all, in this th theory, we say, Technology should not be only in West culture or non-West culture. Technology should be combination of two different views from non-West and West, which is West digitalization and industry 4.0 and non-West society 5.0 from Japan and Germany. We need to combine them with a the future approach. Then I call it future of industry 4.0 plus future of society 5.0. Secondly, we need to use all success factors in these two different technological approach in different cultures to get success. For example, South Korea is always in top innovative economy of the world, and Germany also in methodologies, but always successful. Then we need to get, catch this point, put them together and make it a model and customize it in different cultures and use it. Listen, customize it in different cultures. This is very important because the solution in Germany cannot be a solution in Indonesia because culture is different, factors different. That's why we need to customize it. This is very important. And the second one is we should not let technology to dominate us. We need to use human factors to learn how to use this technology, which, which kind of competencies, to control them, to not be out of control. And my speech, trust, science, and technology is the most anti-science and te technical statement ever. We should not trust them. We just use them. They are our tools, not we are their tools. I am publishing an, an article uh, soon. When I publish, I will give you uh, to Professor Umi the link. The article title, if you use a technology for free, that means this is not a product. That means you are a product for this technology. 
We use Facebook, we use Instagram, we use WhatsApp, we use Gmail every day, many million, million and billion people in the world, all for free. But you need to think, why Google should give us 24 gigabyte memory for free? Of course, they need my, you, all information. And I saw very interesting advertisement from Google about um, employment. They advertised something like we are hiring. And they wrote, we don't need your CV because we know you. Hope the answer was sufficient for you, Mohamed Jaza. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Is there any questions again? Okay. Um, professor. Okay. From class. Hello, sir. My name is Refindra Pramudi Harnadi from the Faculty of Information Technology majoring in Library and Information Sentence. Allow me, allow me to ask what are the preparation for setting up your own business at low cost and what are need after completing your own business preparation? Thank you. Can you please pardon your question because your voice is so much noise and I could not clearly, clearly hear you. Hold on. Pelan-pelan aja, ngomongnya pelan-pelan aja. Slowly. My name is Refiana Pramudi Harnadi from the Faculty of Information Technology, majoring in Library and Information Sentence. Allow me to ask, what are the preparation for setting up your own business at low cost and what are needed after completing your own business preparation. Thank you. Okay, that's very good. I understood you say how we can prepare our own business in this world. Okay, you know, you are from informatic uh, faculty and I already told you my bachelor is also computer hardware and also master of industrial engineering. I'm also like you from engineering background. And when I was a student, I remember I read many books from people, they were successful in this case. For example, at that time in 1990 to 1995, Bill Gates was you know, at the first of Microsoft. And then I was in 1990, I was working in the research center in uh, that called um, IPM. This is the one of the main research center in Iran for fundamental sciences. And because I was member of well, you know, physics and mathematics Olympiad team there, they invited me to work there for research. And in 1990, I, that was the first time I used internet. You know, in that time, the computers, they were so old model, like 286 or 386, so old model computers and internet was not like today. Windows was not operating system, everything at DOS, disk operating system. and. For example, for searching on internet, we should use something like, <clears throat> we call it that time, Air Mosaic. That was a browser called Air Mosaic in 1990. And after some years, you know, we had Yahoo and Yahoo was so, you know, simple and uh, primary, not like today, and no Google that time. And 1995, when Microsoft provided Windows as operating system, for me was very interesting as a computer engineer, a student, because I found Bill Gates is so successful. And at that time, I found Bill Gates now is going to be richest man of the world, but without even finishing his bachelor degree. That means if you want to get success in your own business, your education, your major, your university is not really important. The only important is who are you and what you want to do. If you remember in my speech, I mentioned many times, and also at the conclusion, some cues. EQ, LQ, SQ, conversational intelligence. What is EQ, emotional cohesion? Why I didn't say IQ? Because IQ is something you get genetic from your parents. And I don't talk about this. I talk about this something you can improve it. EQ is something you can improve it. And what is EQ? If you want to you know, improve your EQ to make your business or success, 
you need to know we have five components for EQ. Number one, social skills. You need to have high social skills to communicate to people in the world. Look, I just met Professor Umi in India in December, and now we communicate together, and now we have connection, and we have some shared exchanging knowledge together. This is communication and social skills. This is number one for EQ. Number two, empathy. That means you need to be positive to people. You need to smile people. You need to help people. You need, to, according to model I gave you, seven PS, you need to peace and love to people. And number three, self-awareness. Today, I have to get up at 5 a.m. to prepare myself for this speech. Yesterday, I have to get up at 4 a.m. But nobody put pressure to me to get up at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. I don't need, but this is self-regulation. I need to do a sport. I need to do activity. I need to publish book. I need to write articles. Why? It is not because of money. This is because of something hard. In Persian language. And that means if you try to get number 100, of course, you already got 90. Then if you try to get achieve huge things, money and success in business is so small for you. That was self-regulation. -regula Next one, number four, is self-awareness. That means you need to also think about the others. You need to think how they have life, how they have problem. You need to help them because we are people and we need to always support each other. And the last one is motivation. We need to have motivation. If you want to have high EQ, you need to have improved these five factors. After that, SQ. SQ is social cohesion. That means you need to focus more on social. And then LQ, Q of love. You need to love people because Rumi in my culture says, love is not the only emotion. Love is our very existence. That means love is already there. You just need to recognize it and develop it. And for these things, you need to have also conversational intelligence. What is conversational intelligence? In our brain, we have two sides, here and here. If you co communicate with people, you can make them trust to you. They can trust you. They can follow you. They can be friend with you. Also, you can make them you know, um, so strong to be far from you because they want to be always protected. Because they don't know you, they cannot trust you. If you can you know, do trust people and trust them, that means you have high conversational intelligent abilities. These are important if you want to do success. And these are also about being entrepreneur. You know, because most of, most of the successful people, they are entrepreneurs. Maybe if Professor Umi uh, help us, we can uh, arrange another webinar regarding a topic, entrepreneurship and HR factors. And I talk about this because I published a book about big data and entrepreneurship last year. I can give you the name of the book to Professor Umi. I published it in New York. In this book, I talk about entrepreneurship and role of big data and how this can help us because according to HR research, we have two groups of people. One group of people, they are top people, they are intelligent people. Another group of people, they are normal people. And we put them in two different categories. We call them golden spoons and we call them high, hard fighters. Golden, sp golden spoons mean the people with high intelligence. They are always top students. They are always in high top universities. And the others, hard fighters, they are not top students, but they are, they are always in the pressure. They don't have enough money. They have to work difficult for the, they have to cover the cost of the family, but they are hard fighters. And if we go to the statistical report, most of the successful entrepreneurs of the world and which is people of the world, they come from hard fighters group, not from golden spoons. That's very interesting. I already told you, Bill Gates didn't even didn't finish his bachelor degree. That means you need to know if you want to be entrepreneur to make your business, your own business, your main target should not be getting money. Your main target should be to become entrepreneur to make job position for many people. Then you get a huge, huge success. And you need to make yourself strong to be hard fighters, you know, to group of hard fighters. This is a point. And how to prepare this? For this, you need to make a clear business plan. Always when I 
start to lecture, I ask my student, why you are in Berlin? Why you are in Germany? Why you move from your country here? And they say, because I want to have a good job. And I tell them, if you want to have a good job, you never get a good job. And they say, why? I say, because one thing, have a good job is not enough. You need to make a clear plan what you need exactly. You are, most of you, you are Muslim and you believe Quran. And in Quran, they says, if you want to do something in practical level, you need to always write them as a clear plan. This writing influences your brain, put pressure to you to do it. In Islam, we have many saying about that. They say, be careful about your thoughts because your thoughts can influence your words. Be careful about your words because your words can influence your deeds. That's very interesting. That means your, you know, your religion as invisible part of your culture already gave you all this infrastructure knowledge. You need to use them to make a clear business plan and start to do this business. But for this, you need to follow the news every day. You need to follow the newspapers. How is the global economy situation? Which business, which products, which services, which market? You need to do market to understand the and forecast the consumer behavior uh, and produce products and service and give them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Professor. Is there any questions again? Uh, from Zoom, maybe? You can type uh, your name. Maybe I will call you. Raise your or or you can raise hand. Okay. Okay, professor. Uh, I have question actually. <laughs> yes, please. Um. Yes. Um. Maybe I want to ask about. Um. A little bit different, maybe uh, about your topic. Uh, it um, about human, about culture. Um, we uh, I I think that how can we use technology to promote uh, diversity, equality, and in uh, inclusivity in society about uh, including to the the wave theory maybe that's my okay. question if i want to answer your question your question is mainly on how to use technology first of all according to the faith wave theory and 7ps model you need to know technology and the other pillars of this 7ps model they are not an individual topic technology cannot be alone Technology always influences six other pillars, and the six other pillars influence technology. That means if you talk about technology, you need to know technology is based on your education, based on your politicians' regulation, based on your culture, based on your environmental approach, based on your society, based on technical uh, point you have in your culture. Then technology is not an individual topic, first of all. Secondly, I showed you a key data when I gave you the model KTB. Technology is always with two more factors, knowledge, technology, business. They are together. Then if you want to talk about technology, you need to know, first of all, technology is not individual topic. Secondly, 7PS model technology is there, influence them, and they influence technology and culture is the first priority. Thirdly, technology is in KTB model, knowledge, technology, business. And then with all these things together, you need to know why we want to use this technology. Because we want to make the world a better place for living. This is the aim of fifth wave theory. And for this, technology should not dominate us. We need to control technology to use this technology to capture data, to not be out of control. Because we have, as I said, many science fiction movies, stories about future when technology dominate people. If you just Google on YouTube, there are so many videos about this interview with you know, artificial intelligence, the robots we have today, like Sophia, like the other robots. And they all say, when they ask them what you want to do in the future, they say, we want to dominate people, these artificial intelligences. And they say, but you, because you are creator of me, 
I don't kill you and I put you in the human zoo. And this is very, very dangerous. That's why we need to also know when we talk about technology, the danger of AI and robotics is very serious in the future. That's why we need to get ready for that and should not, must not let them to be out of control. Look at today's view, because we talk about technology. We have two different views for technology. Today, technology, you can use drones to do some transportation, mailbox, or to do some videos and movies, but also you can use drones for war, to kill people. Then technology has two different approaches, be positive or be negative. But who is deciding for that? Who is behind? Human. We need to always know backbone of fifth wave theory is human and the factors relate, related to human. And when we talk about human, culture is there. And when we talk about culture, communication is there. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Professor, for uh, the answer. I think mm, we are running off the time. Okay. Um, we are in, at the end of the event. I would like to thank you to Prof. Hamid Dos Muhammadian for sharing uh, his knowledge, his, his expertise, and uh, the experience with us today. Um, I would like to invite Ibu Umi uh, to give virtual certificate as token of appreciation. I will share it. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, that would be good if you give me also the video link. Okay. Yes. And we also have certificate. Okay, yes, thank you so much. <laughs> so thank it's so virtual much. certificate and we will upload this uh, to YouTube and also we will share the link to you soon. Thank, you, thank so you so much. Thank you so much, Prof Hamid, for your time. Hopefully, we will have another uh, webinar in the future. Yes, I am also happy because of the webinar today and also uh, happy to, to have more in the future together. And I would like to ask you for, you know, because we already promised the students for the more topics, as you mentioned, the main one we would be in the future about art of writing article and publishing article and some other topic about in you know IT and entrepreneurship HR yes. Yes. and uh, the other topics like cultural dimensions and I can go to more details for these topics for the students because this is something they need to know we should not have a gap between technical students and humanities science students it's very important to bridge them together and then we have more yes. topic that's why I, I would like to ask all the students to make you know, team works and come to Professor Umi to make team for making different topics, different articles and publish them. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you I so much. Okay. Afternoon now is yeah. here is almost uh, nine, uh, before nine o'clock. I'm okay. going to be to start my day. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay, I also would like to express my appreciation to all of the audience for your active participation participation, questions, and valuable contribution. I hope you have found this event to be a meaningful and rewarding experience. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you Hello. soon, Prof. See you soon. Thank you for okay, maybe, maybe we can uh, take a picture. We, okay, maybe we okay. can take yes. a picture. Open, open. Yes, of course. Open the camera uh, for the students, students you can you can start the video right now to take picture together how we can do that shall i do something no uh resty will will screenshot from oh wait wait uh, can uh, can someone help me uh i want to remove the spotlight first yes. Maybe you need to open your mask in the photo. <laughs> okay, for the idea. student at uh, at the class, you can you can uh, go forward because uh, 
your picture cannot be seen. You can move forward. Okay, somebody can help me. Maybe uh, Muhammad Reza, can you can you take uh can you capture? Can you capture uh by count uh yeah? Okay. Uh okay for the students, can you open your camera first? Okay. Uh, Almananda, your picture cannot be seen. Prilia Yaumil, mau movie dia. Uh, your picture cannot be seen. Okay. For students, okay. Okay. Everyone already? Okay, ya. Yeah. One. Okay. Wait. Wait, Bu. Reza, are you yeah. ready? Yeah, ready, Bu. Okay. One, two, three. First page, ya yeah, tadi first page, and then next, one, two, three, okay, Reza already? Ya yeah, Bu, ready Bu. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you, bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Uh, I hope we can always nice help. Day, you. Thank you for nice coming. Nice to see you again. Thank you, sir.